This project is an honest and in-depth perspective of and from former students of Milton Hershey School. We call ourselves MILTS. An organic, open discussion of life before, during, and after attending MHS. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to MilkTalkPodcast.com or Milk Talk Podcast, whichever one. Um, I'm here. I'm Jack Stroman. I'm here with Go and Bima and Jessica Corrado Platt. Warner Williams will hopefully be joining us later, and we have... Miss Deanna Slam, Slam, is it Slammons or Salmons? Slammons, like Slammons. Slammons. Oh, you Slammons, I'm sorry, Miss Deanna Slammons. I don't know why I want to chop your name up, my bad. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. That's all right. Hey, um, my main name's Bradley, so people who knew me as Deanna Bradley, you know. Well, that's I mean, good. Let's start there. So can you tell us your full name now and how long you've been married and what, what class you were in? Sure. So um, name is Deanna. Rose, Rosetta, it's Ro Rose on one social security card and Rosetta on another. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Different personality, that's how we do it. No comment. <laughs> Bradley, um, main name, class of 91, um, and then my married name is Slamons. I've been married for 24 years. Um, this um, month will be 25 years. And we're hoping to do something cool for our 25th, but you know, with everything. I know. Knows. Yep. These are crazy, crazy times, but at least you got each other. Yes, exactly. And, and we have kids. Um, I have a 14, a 15 year old. I keep saying 14. He turned 15 in March. 15 year old boy um, named AJ. Um, he's named after his dad. My husband is Andrew, Andy. Okay. His AJ is Andrew Jeremiah. And then I have a daughter who is 18. She's a freshman in college, and her name is Corey. Okay. Corey. And and is your husband a milk? No. No, he's not a milk. All right. I wanted to get that straight because I, I'm pretty sure you stayed in Hershey after you graduated. Is that correct? No, I actually went to Messiah College. Okay. So that was you know just across the river, the main campus for two years. I was a communications major and then I switched my major to film production. And, and it was actually because I was missing the city and Temple University was offering two years of schooling. It didn't matter like if Messiah and Temple had a partnership. And so if you were a Messiah student, but you were film production, mm -hmm. you take your last two years, your junior and senior year in Philly. And that's what I did because I just was like, I'm done with grass. I'm done. <laughs> right. I mean, like farms and cows and stuff. Well, Messiah was the same way, and I was like, I just want to, you know, from Harrisburg, I just want to be in the city. So I spent those two years, and that's where I met my husband in Philly. Ah, so he's a Philly guy. Yeah, and actually, before Philly, he's from Chicago. All right. Okay, so he's a city boy. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how's he doing out there in the country? I mean, you know, like at Milton Hershey, it's funny. He definitely has his thing where he loved – house parenting at Milton Hershey because of the diversity of the kids. Like right. you can house parent anywhere. It could be on the moon as long as you had the students in your house from the city, from the, you know, from everywhere. Right. We just made it like one big party. So as long as we had kids that he could ball with and play basketball and all that with, then he was good. Yeah. But he's from, um, there's a suburb of Chicago called Aurora. It's got a lot of gang activity there. Okay. And so he went to a high school where I think the senior class was 700 plus kids. Wow. Cool. And there was a lot of East Side, West Side, Bloods and Crips, you know, whatever. He didn't get caught up in that, obviously, but he has always been around um, that type of culture with boys and just kind of, you just have to watch what you say and what, you know, you wear the color the, the wrong day in Chicago and you end up shot. So it's kind of interesting that his background was from there. Yeah. And then he moved to North Philly at Temple. So he was, he was good. He was like, nah, I'm cool. I know how to navigate. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, you guys met at school, and then you went back up to the milk to work. Is that right? Exactly. So, when we were dating, I was telling him about Milton Hershey because you know it's so funny. Like you, we all know this. Like you meet somebody, and you gotta really tell them. Like I'm not really. I didn't grow up normal. <laughs> right. We're, di normal. we're different. <laughs> we're different. You gotta know what you're getting into, you know. And we're. if you marry. Me, which was like my thousand milk family. Right. <laughs> so, told him I grew up at a boarding school. You know, this is how I grew up. And especially in particular, you know, when you're dating somebody, he has, just to give you a bit of background, even though he 
Um, he's Caucasian um, and he's very multicultural minded. He has a heart for all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. Are going to be celebrating 56 years of marriage like next year. Wow, long time. Like, we did not grow up in the type of family that we grew up in. Mm -hmm. Got three older brothers, they're all married, they got married before us. Um, we didn't jump anybody on that. He's two and a half years from the um, from the, the third one, so he's the fourth. Okay, and they were married, they've all been they're all married to the same person. Mm -hmm. All kids. They married the same woman. They married to the same. Woman. <laughs> 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 Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> oh man. Can you can't help yourself. It's Friday. We can tell it's Friday. I really can't. I'm sorry. Get <laughs> <laughs> come on. That's what I'm under. Need an icebreaker. I only have one more left. <laughs> Dealing with a bunch of kids too. <laughs> They're all married to, they, you know, the person that they're married to now is who they married at the beginning. So that, his family was like, this is weird. I, you know, I can't relate to that. So when we got married, I was telling, or when we were dating, I was telling him how I grew up, you know, at Milton Hershey School. And that there was a place built on chocolate. And of course, being from Chicago, he's like, there's no school like that. I would have heard of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Until you, took him up, until you took him up there and was like... I, and Here I it is. took him at a homecoming. You know how it is. You took him at a homecoming? Is that his first meeting of milk yes. was at a homecoming? Yes. Wow. Oh. Homecoming. You went big with it. I would say, go big or go home. Oh, That's it. This is my family. This is my family. That's it. <laughs> how, did, how, did he like, handle that? how did he handle that? Yeah. So it was overwhelming. Um, he's an introvert. So it was interesting, too. Oh. Even bring, yeah, even bringing him around all those people. But he was absolutely blown away. We went to... The Mortensons, Betty Ann Mortensen, and I forget her husband's name, their student home because my house parents were not on duty. So this was like six or seven years after graduating. So my house parents were still around. They weren't on duty. So they gave me, I was, you know, calling them and they said, the, the Mortensons are around. You remember them. They were like either a paired home or a relief or whatever. So we went there and they had elementary boys. My husband was shocked. So it was after the game, I think we went to dinner and then we stopped by the Mortensons and the kids were all in their PJs getting ready for bed. You know, they went to bed before the sun went down. <laughs> right. Elementary. And he was shocked to see these little kids. He could not compose himself. He started to cry. Mm. Right there in the kitchen. It's a lot with, to take in. It wow. was. And he said, and being the youngest of four boys and he's a mama's boy, he'll tell you, he's like, I don't think I could ever live away from home. How do these kids do it? And I was like, you just kind of do it. Like, if they're really, you know, one day you're you gotta like- You got to your way through that. You got to thug yep. your way through it. Yeah, yep. you do it. And the, the kids were happy. It doesn't mean they weren't homesick, but you know how Milton Hershey kids are. They're ready for anything, anytime. Yep. It's just how it yep. is. So we, let, let's just say we drove back to Philly and it was a very quiet ride. Mm. It was very reflective. That's like, a lot to take in. You're like, what did I just, what, like, Hershey <laughs> chocolate? Like, the whole Hershey chocolate thing changed. <laughs> right, right, right. So he met, he met your milk family. He got to see the milk, the school, and, and that, you know, so that's a lot to take in. It was a lot to take in, but then he saw the energy that I had, because you know how it is, especially if you haven't yeah. been back in a while, and then it's homecoming, you're hugging everybody, and he's just kind of standing there, because if you're a spouse of a milk, you're like, you just stand there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get introduced every now and then. Oh, this, this is so-and-so. Never mind. Your mom. <laughs> you know yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, I don't know, like, I don't know if you've had, like, that first homecoming. I've never personally brought anybody to homecoming, because I'm scared to, first of all, because I just, <laughs> I just know our people and we are very inappropriate. We are very, um, any wrong thing to be done will be done. We're going to poke at it. <laughs> yeah. Any, any, especially if they know there's someone there that they don't know. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Go over there and kiss him in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got uh, to tell a quick, quick, quick little story, just and then we'll get back to you, Dean. I want to finish hearing your story, but I, I used to throw parties in Philly, and so it, I used to throw a party at this after hour spot called Palmer. Y'all, you know, some of y'all might know it. It was a six uh, spring party. I've been there once or twice. And that, mm -hmm. you know, at at one point in time, that was the hood spot. Like, so <laughs> I was throwing a party, and I remember 
uh, uh, Gordy Drain came in wearing a suit. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I just brothers and sisters looking at him like, who is this dude? Gordy was comfortable as hell. He was like, I'm next yeah. to the pool table. It's whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's comfortable. And people were like, what is going on? What kind of people yeah. is he flaws? Like, yeah, that's a milk. Yeah. He's good everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's good everywhere. That's the milk, especially at the Palmer. Great, damn. Yeah. Yeah. I but had so some good times. Bring, bring us back to your husband. So you're going back to milk. You guys are still young. You, you graduate together, I'm assuming. And then where do you go from there? He went to Eastern College, which is right on the edge of Philly, St. David's. And we met at a church. So he was doing youth ministry. I was doing theater ministry, like doing Bible plays at Easter time or whatever. Um, and it was across the crowded room. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we, we dated. We, I told him about the mill. And he is actually the one who said, let's be house parents. Wow. Right. Like, wait, what? Like, what What do you mean, let's be house parents? Like, you know how it is. You graduate, you're like, I, I want to get away from here. And I was a good student, and I was in SGA, and I was, I don't know, some student home officer or whatever. Played band, did all that stuff. I was a parent weekend shows. So, I mean, I had a positive time there. I was involved in everything, but I just wasn't thinking that I would go back. It never dawned on me. Right. Here he is a social work major and a youth ministry major. He's double major. It tugged on his heartstring. I mean, this is why he cried. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was a, you know, I was film. You know, I was like, no, we're right. in Hollywood right now. Like, we need to go west. Um, so he said, what do you think about house parenting? Well, we had spent the first two years of our marriage hanging out with kids. Mm -hmm. Youth ministry stuff. Picking up kids in Aurora, hanging out with them. We moved to Philly. We bought a house right on the campus of Temple University. It was our first good house. Place. Very good yeah. place. Yep, yeah, it was right behind, right on Carlisle Street between Diamond and Norris. You know, one of those row homes there, we renovated it, fixed it up. And we had kids at our house all the time, especially if moms were single moms and they're like, oh, I'm at the Slammons, mom. And I would go on the phone, so-and-so's with us, is it okay? Yeah, keep them, I'm starting my shift. So we'd order a pizza, put it on a movie, they would knock a wall out, like de mm -hmm. de help demolish a wall, especially boys. <laughs> They loved it, you know, they would have yeah, like, yeah. Stuff, run wiring and this is like so bad <laughs> that we were doing this stuff, <laughs> you know, with, with no kind of like contractor's license, but we were fixing up a house and they were watching us, you know? Yeah. And then he just said, do you want to work at Milton Hershey School? I mean, we're already doing this. Ha ha. <laughs> Not really, <laughs> we can give them back, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what year are we talking here? So we're talking 99 that we November 1st. We got married in 95. The first two years of our marriage we spent in Aurora, Illinois. We actually lived in the basement of his parents' house. That was a trip. I love his parents. I have the best in-laws in the world. But to move in with your husband's parents, you know, like in the beginning, to save money. He was working construction. I was doing something a little bit in social work. We closed on our house in 97 in North Philadelphia, rent, renovated it, you know, took a year, year and a half to renovate. And by that November, November 1st was our first day on campus at Milton Hershey School as Flex House Fair. So, so what, what was that like though? Like going, like, it's one thing mm -hmm. to be talking about, it's another thing to be moving your stuff into a student home. You about to be a, like, that had to be a trip for you. Well, you know what shocked me at first, and I don't know if you guys remember this, cause I don't know if they really did that. Now help me remember, the thing that shocked me the most was the interview. Cause they call you, they do a phone interview to make sure you're not a creep. And then they, right. <laughs> you know, right. which you can't tell until you that's get the there. first level, though. And that's the first level. They say they weed out like 75% of people just because what they say on the phone. <laughs> like, right. Right. <laughs> so if you get an in person interview, you're like 25% of the people who do that. So you go on campus and you stay in the relief apartment of a student home. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. sleep overnight. So you stay there, you meet students. The house parents cook a meal, you sit down, they pray behind the table, and I'm like having major flashbacks, like, oh my sure. God, you know, we're sitting in a student home, and they're serving like, who knows, shepherd's pie or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> I got to do the dishes. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and the, what the house parents are doing is they're watching you to see how natural you are with kids. Right. Well, we naturally were. I mean, we right. all around kids. And then I'm a graduate, and I prepared him so much for things. And so we were in the kitchen helping load the dishwasher. Hello. Oh, what? 
the what? dishwasher. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Say what now? It was done in 15 minutes when we were there. I was like, what? Wait a minute. Huh? This was that the is... dishwasher when I was yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. Right. So we were loading the dishwasher. We were helping. So the interview was crazy. So the next day, we're in Founders Formal behind the scenes stuff. And of course, they're FBI checking and police checking, and they're asking all this stuff. And their biggest, one of the biggest questions they ask, which I remember them saying to us is, what does discipline mean to you? Well, you, that word has a lot of connotations. Especially when we was there compared to what's acceptable now. And you know what I mean? Like, that's, mm -hmm. I slapped the shit out of a kid. No, that's <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for your time. <laughs> Y'all still yeah. got medals? <laughs> I, played, I actually played it safe because I had a feeling they were wanting to know, like, how are you going to treat the kids? Right. And I said, discipline means structure and good habits. So you see, you can be disciplined and working out and exercising and diet mm -hmm. and all that. That's what, doesn't mean you're going to hit a kid. Right. So I totally found the other meaning of the word discipline. And if you provide structure for, for a child and relationships, everything is going to be good from there. Mm -hmm. that one you know like they because you know they, they want to hear you say well i think it's okay for you to strike a child or i think it's right. okay for you to, and you just can't you can't say that stuff you know right. so from day one working at milton hershey school you had to watch everything you said so sure. imagine this when you're a student you have to watch what you're doing okay. when you are an adult double on a whole nother level I believe it on a whole nother level because of liabilities. And these are other people's kids. You know, yeah. these are other people's kids. That's are the biggest kids. part right there. You got somebody else's kid and you but got a million like different people that are parents. And so they want an excuse to parent. Yeah. So they call me with my son, call me with an issue. I'm coming up there. I'm a fix. Well, nobody do that. To my, so you got to, that's, exactly. that's crazy. I feel like the, the different though with how Sprint, like when we went, there was a lot like house parents had a lot more leniency. I felt like they could get away with a lot more than probably what when you started and now. Like you said, like you had to watch different. every word you said. I mean, I know when I was there, house parents, it didn't matter what they did. Yeah, but our, our parents were different. They yeah. were raised different. Well, so this whenever next was different. Whenever you're coming in, you're always dealing with the, the, the bar that was set by the generation prior to you mm -hmm. or prior mm -hmm. to that. So when right. we got there, we were dealing with, like you said, the, the old stuff. It was still okay to paddle. It was still okay to put your foot in the kid's ass. You know what, what I mean? Whereas, I exactly, it, let alone what you said. Now, that's what something you was talking about then. Saying something was like, that was whatever. But putting your hands on the kid was a whole other thing. So I can't even imagine. And, th and then think about it now. And this is what's evolved even since. So I was there from 1999 as a house parent to 2014. And then we can talk about when we transitioned, because I transitioned into administration. But what we're dealing with now is students with devices and they are videotaping things that are done. So you better make sure you are not. <laughs> I didn't know if they allowed that. See, that's interesting too, because yeah, I didn't know. They don't allow it, but if a kid has a device, they're not gonna, I mean, and they catch it and they send it somewhere. Now that also is kids are filming other kids doing stuff. We always said in our student home, we were at student home Harpers, which I found out the other day was, re, it's a rename from Purity Hall. I don't know if you ever heard of the history of that student home. That was a quarantine student home. Never it heard of it. It was a student home out near Anvil that was called Purity Hall. And when the polio vaccine hit campus, they homeschooled kids out at student. It's so funny because I homeschooled my kids when I was a house parent there. So funny. All of the like ah, wow. parallel things. They homeschooled third and fourth grader, third and fourth grade boys out in a big farm home out close to Anvil. It was like 12 miles from the school or, you know, 10 miles or whatever. And it was called Purity Hall. And any kids who were sick, they got better out there. Like they were wow. out, out there and it was for a small time. If you look in the archives or you type in Purity Hall, Milton Hershey School Quarantine, and, the, and then Milton Hershey later named it Harper's. People say it was because it was out by Harper's Ferry. I don't know. But they reintroduced that name. They were bringing back old names of student homes. And so we moved from student home Switzerland when we first got hired to student home Harper. <laughs> and international, you know, that whole international cluster that they built right by the swimming pool? That's a whole nother. <laughs> no, it's crazy. I heard we, about Mardi Gras. What was that one they had the other day? Mardi Gras or, or, yeah. or whatever. Granada. They have Granada. It's, that it's been trippy for us, Deanna, because you were there for the last however many years. Whereas we got this huge gap, somebody on, 
and they're telling us some stuff like, you know this? And we're like, no, we don't know that. So, you know, take that picture for us. So that's crazy. Exactly. And so we would say to the students, look, whatever happens in Harper stays in Harper's. And I'm not saying that we wanted to hide and be secretive, right. but when things are taken out of context, a whole slew of something happens. You know, you we find out that we're pillow fighting with the kids in the student home, which we would have pillow fighting. That's the kind of house as we were. You know, for birthday, right. we do like pillow fights. Oh, the slammers are doing birthday smackdowns. No, that's not what it's <laughs> not <laughs> we do birthday smack. Like it's a pillow fight. And everyone looked forward to doing a pillow fight when it was their birthday. But when somebody hears you're doing a pillow fight in a student home and it's like a bullying and you're doing, so it's like you had to really be careful, even in playing with students that you just were, you know, you just have to be very careful. It was, it was interesting. I'm, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop you there, Dan, and I'm, and I'm gonna give you the opportunity because I don't want this to be solely about, you know, what had happened uh, recently at the school because I want to talk about you and how it affected you as not, just as a human, let alone being a house parent and a mother and all that. So right. can you tell us a little bit about, so you were a house parent for, a, that's a long time. 15 and years. 15 wow. years, and so you're no longer a house parent, is that correct? No. And there was an issue that happened recently. Can you tell us how you see it? And, and wait, before you, before you say that, let me just say one thing. <laughs> <laughs> what, one of the things, that, the reason why we wanted to do this show is like, for me in Philadelphia, I have people that I care about always coming up to me. Oh, there was an article in the paper about Milton Hershey School and did it, yeah. you know, and it was always something negative, right? Yeah. It was always something, it was never positive, or maybe one in 20 things was positive. So you always had people looking at you like, yo, what's going on up at that school? And I would say, first of all, you show me any kind of school or place that's been around as long as Milton Hershey's been for over 100 years that's never had any kind of issues. So that's my first thing. The second thing is, there's always more than three sides to each story. They always say two sides, but there's always more than that. So I'm, I'm going to preface it with that. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience as a house parent and how that played out? Right. So I, you know, I always say that there's one side, the other side, and somewhere in the middle lies the truth. Because okay. no one ever is even approaching their side objectively. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I think about situations, so we house parented kids, and, and during our career house parents, we started with multi-age, with middle and high school boys together in 99, sixth through 12th grade, and that was stupid. Two middle school kids, 10 high school kids, and we tried as we could to have them not get beat up. But I mean, you know, like that's what they had. They yeah. had and you asked me, what was it like when I got hired and I packed my suitcase and walked on campus? I said to Andy, this is not the school I grew up in. And right. I meant it in a lot of ways. Number one, Dr. Lepley was running the school. Mm. And when Dr. Lepley was running the school, it gave a lot of empowerment to parents and sponsors and students that um, was stacked against house parents. And I say that to say, um, anytime a student didn't like having to do kitchen, they called their parent, the HLA would come out to the student home and tell the house parent, don't discipline them like that. I mean, what's HLA? What's HLA? What? An HLA is a home life administrator, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. What, that was what we walked into in 99. Wow. I was like, okay, so we're house parents, but we're really kind of like coaches. You're just a doctor. <laughs> right. You're just we in the really, background. We really were in the background. I mean, that's kind of what they said, but then at the same time, it was like, you need to do what you need to do to make sure that these objectives get met. The kids are so up, when, they're or whatever. When did wow. that change? So it started to shift when, when Johnny O'Brien came. So from 99 to about 2004, so five years, we were kind of like in this weird space where it was like, what can, we're not allowed to say or do anything. Johnny O'Brien came and he said, look, I want this to be the home that Milts are familiar with. They're gonna mow the lawn. There was a lawn care service mowing our lawn. What? What? See, what? This, this is something they weren't sending out in the alumni uh, things because we would have been up there picking it. Pick, pick right? Yo, right. Come oh, on, man. My lawn care service. I got 12 boys in the house. They're bouncing yeah. all over. Push mowing this lawn and pulling weeds will get us all tired. Come on. There wasn't Word. a barn. There Word. was no barn anymore. Shit. That's crazy. Huh? So, yeah, we had so a like, full barn and we had at Willowwood we had so much grass it ain't make sense. <laughs> Yes, and we were mowing, right? Oh my so God. When I For say sure. this was not the same school, it was not the same school. So fast forward. So, so about 2004, J Johnny O'Brien makes things right. Now we are 
divisional, we have high school kids, and then at some point we had middle school kids. We switched from middle to high school for several reasons, and I won't get into all that because I know we don't have the time. But at one point in time, we had middle school kids, we switched to high school, and any middle school kids who switched to ninth grade, we invited them back to our house. So say we had kids in sixth and seventh grade, and then we went to high school age. Well, they spent eighth grade in a student home, and they're like, we're going to go back to the slammings. Mm -hmm. This particular kid was one of those kids. Okay. We had him in sixth grade. So like people are like, oh, you had him in high school. No, we knew this kid from, si from sixth grade on. Jump Street, right. To 11th grade. So knew his family history, all this stuff. He has multiple siblings, eight or seven. Wow. It came out, and well, this is not what the article will share. It came out that one of his older siblings did something to him when he was little. Did something wrong, nasty, whatever. I'm not even going to say it. He confessed that to me his ninth grade year. Mm -hmm. I reported it. Mm -hmm. His home abuse, because the person was at home or had access to him. He was still a minor at, in ninth grade. He lied about telling me. Because he was embarrassed at that point. He was embarrassed. And also, 65% of kids recant. Like, because it's uncle or grandpa or who had a coach yeah. or a teacher that they care about. So they're not good. They, then they're like, crap, what did I just do? Because guess what? All the legal stuff comes. Well, they want you in court. They want you to test, testify. All that other stuff. And then there's the money. That's the other thing about yeah. nursery school that's not talked about often is that they have so much money. People, it might not necessarily have been that kid. It might have been somebody in his family or outside of influencing him so I, I mean I'm, I'm just speculating at this point but exactly so this is what happened so he lies about telling me he was molested when he was younger um, and that didn't make it into the court case because he, he that was the whole reason for his depression his moods his mood swings I mean we rode the whole wave of suicide attempts being on medication not taking medication switching counselors I mean this is a student this is the student who we got in our house in sixth grade and literally watched him fall apart from what I believe were several things. I do, I mean, what is probably the only truth in the article, which he never told me, and if you read the article and you read the court case documents, he never came out to us as homosexual. Um, and that was his whole premise for suing the school and for blaming us for damaging him in some way is because he came out to us and we, we bullied him. He never had a conversation and under oath, he said he never had a conversation with us about his sexual orientation. From sixth grade to ninth grade, I think he was battling that. He was battling who he was, who he wanted to be. I need to probably share some things about my past because I might feel this way about guys, but he never really said that. The only thing he really that he told me was this happened. So I called his mom. I called his mom and said, one of your oldest sons did this to your baby. He was actually a twin, so it was like one of the twin, you know, one of the twins. And she's, oh my gosh! So she's going through. She has to testify. He has to testify under oath on testimony. He says what I told Mrs. Slamons was not true. That gave me a glimpse into who he was as a kid. Um, you don't and his up. and his family and his family, like you don't make that stuff up. So after. Hey, Again, I'm sorry. I was in a work meeting. Why? We just never said hi to him. I was in a work meeting. I, I came in late. I'm sorry. Give me my demerits. I understand. <laughs> you lost your dishes, name. Bro. I'm, you not on duty. <laughs> I'm not on duty. And 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 Deanna, like I I know you were you were reluctant a little bit to talk about all this, and and I just know that it weighed on you. Because like I said, I didn't know what you were going through. I didn't even hear, you know, sometimes you hear stuff. I didn't even hear anything about this. So I think that all just came to a conclusion recently. Yeah, so the case was four years. Wow, wow. that's a long time. So you're tied up in all that emotion financially? So we left uh, Milne Hershey School in 2014, and I took a job as an administrator. And in, in, it wasn't in Peekert's office, but it was a direct report to, to his office to write curriculum for character and leadership. So I started writing curriculum 14-15 school year and 15-16 school year. The summer of 2016, this kid files a lawsuit. He files a lawsuit because Rick Fuad contacted him about why he was terminated from Milton Hershey. Interesting. Interesting. I heard that name. Rick Fuad contacted him, 
So he puts this lawsuit together. And when we unfold the 95 page lawsuit that talked about he was under mental duress at, you know, at the school, nobody understood his emotions. He, you know, all this stuff. And on top of it, my Christian house parents tried to say that I shouldn't be gay or whatever. We're, we, I was like, wait, what? I'm reading. This is, this is the same kid who chose to come to you the second yeah, time exactly. after intermediate yeah. division to. This is the one who came. And then when he attempted suicide his ninth grade year, shortly after he told us about the abuse, it became emotional, like he became suicidal. He listed my husband and I as his safe adults. Wow. Yeah. It's not adding so, up. There. So, it, so it took four years for all this to come out. Right. It's, you know? And, and, and so are you happy with, I mean, there's no real happy ending to it, but, you know, do you feel? I'll tell you a couple of things that happened at that time. So 2016, the court case comes and Pete says to me, Deanna, if you want to fight this all the way, I will. Because I'm tired of this guy, the guy who I just mentioned breaking the school through the mud, not understanding the circumstances. You sit down, I'm sitting in legal, and it's like a three hour whole question. My husband's in there too. What happened with this kid? I'll give you the timeline. I start from beginning all the way to the end. And they said, we're putting you on the stand because that's the only way that this is gonna go away is for them to hear all the stuff that you're saying. So we're on the stand. Well, it's 2016 that it's deposition. Well, 2017, my husband's business is going well. I'm like, probably it was stressing me out, even though I wanted to stay at Milton Hershey School, but I was like, I think I just want to be at back home, homeschool the kids, whatever. 2017, I put in my resignation, May. July of 2017, the Philadelphia Inquirer wrote that article. And they're one of the worst they with all this stuff. Milton Hershey School. The majority of the staff at Milton Hershey School right now think I left because the school fired me. That was the biggest heartbreak probably of all of it you put in all that time this oh, man, they just you to school, and you went back to work and then ah that's 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 yeah. a tough pill to swallow so that sucks you know, but let me ask you something do your kids still reach out to you yeah we have, we have a kid at our house right now who's an intern for am for amazing freedom who's learning to sell on amazon and the law office reached out to eight of the 10 students who lived with us at the time, and all of them testified against this student. And that's the, and that's the statement right there that I was digging yeah. for is that, you know, it, it sucks that there's no storybook ending here, but it sounds like you went up to Milton Hershey School to make a difference with these kids that were us when we were little, and it right. sounds like it, you helped. You know, if, if those eight out of 10 and all those kids are still coming back and checking on you and are willing to stand up for you. That, that says a lot in itself. It, it really meant a lot. And you know, it's humbling because you don't want somebody to have to go under oath and say something. In particular, you know how you feel when you're a student at the school. There's a lot of negative emotions that don't necessarily have to do with your house parents. You've been neglected. You feel like you've been dropped off at this school and the house parents as best as they can, they're taking care of you. I didn't assume that the students we had loved us enough to like go to and say something like I was like, if you want to subpoena them, fine, but we don't, we, we will tell you who we have positive relationships with. I don't know what they're going to say, because we, I grew up at the school, you have funny feelings about like, man, I can't believe they gave me kitchen, like, I can't believe we had all those short, like all that stuff starts. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Trust me, as we've been doing this, this, this show you know what i mean people are coming up and it's interesting just the emotions and it's stuff that people are still carrying from the school you know you, you get older you kind of tuck it away and yep. so it's funny we, we start talking I'm, I'm like kind of flashing back as we're having these as you're saying certain things and i'm just like going back to tuscarora and you know this just thought my thought process so it's really strange that that situation happened, but you speak so highly of oh. Milton Hershey. So I, I mean, I, I feel like that's that's really important that you didn't get bitter, like because I could see where that could take you into a, a dark place. You know, more especially when you got a you got a student that all you try to do is help, and for whatever reason, and we don't unfortunately we don't know the backdrop behind him. What what caused him to Right. 
who said, oh, we can get you money? I don't know. Like, I just feel like there's a backdrop that, that's out there that you don't know about and we don't know about that he thought would be lucrative for him maybe where he could make a couple of dollars or I don't, well, I don't know. And, and, you know, it's interesting as, you know, some of these things, you know, I don't know how public they are. I think as, as the years have gone by, they've been released, but Rick Fuad was, it was discovered that he had lists of kids who got terminated and he was like an ambulance chaser. Why do you think that is having been a milk? That's, I wonder what happened to yeah. him there. Some people that's, have bad. Well, that's that's a good question, Jess. Exactly. You know, some people have pent up resentment, and any way they can get back, they will. Now it seems mm. like this yeah. guy's had. He, he seems like the the you know the extreme version of that type of person. Yeah. Is this who had a milk? Who plus, he got money. He is. You know, right? Yeah. Can go yeah. ahead and get me some money. Bonus. And get he's, a, he's a TU guy too. Mm. Who had? Yep. Class of 87, maybe? No, nah, he's not in class. Whoa, whoa. Easy on that. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. Easy on the 87. <laughs> whoa. Nah. I don't know that dude. He got sensitive real quick. I know yeah, he said yeah. it. He was like, no. Mm -mm. No, no. Not my class. Interesting hey, about but, this? Oh, go ahead. No, no, Deanna, go ahead. I was going to say, what's interesting about this situation and this story, you know, when you think about betrayal, and you think about somebody who really wounds you, this is a student, I'll tell you this, him and his twin brother were on my cousin's visiting roster. Wow. So, so this is what happened. My cousins live in Harrisburg and they would come down to the student home all the time. Cousin Dina, we wanna come down to the student home. So of course they play on our playground, whatever, picnic with the boys. One of my cousins, she's a, she was in ninth grade the same year that this guy's brother was in ninth grade. They start get googly eyeing, and I find out later they're dating. Okay, wait a minute. Well, what are you doing dating a student in my student home? You know what happens, but what are you doing dating a student? You know, in my student home. These twin boys just got very close to my family. My distant cousin, she um, signed them out on visitation, and they would go out visiting with members of my family. Like, it's like, it's so surreal to think about the level of betrayal with somebody who really is close to you. And I guess I just say, it really, you can't really feel betrayed unless you're really close to somebody. There are um, Facebook posts after he left the school, and I think what made him seek probably some monetary gain was he was terminated. He did not graduate. Uh, well. Oh. Well, sixth grade, yeah, have, see, that's again. That's, that that's it could be that Fuad guy all in his ear too. Like you know, I want to, I gotta meet this. I gotta meet this Fuad. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to spend a bunch of time on him though. Right. I don't want to give yeah. people light that don't deserve light. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't mean to be like that, but at the same time, I want to focus on Deanna and I want to hear her story. Right. So I, I just wanted to, to, you know, go his point about not getting bitter. I wanted to hear about what you've done since then. I know, I think I read you wrote a book. Yeah, so I wrote a book. Um, I wrote two books. I'm actually on my third book now. Wow. wow. The first book I wrote was a, uh, is a memoir of my life. Um, before, door, before we were hired as house parents, we actually lost our first child. Mm. And so we were pregnant wow. in Philly. We were super excited. And I found out that I have an incompetent cervix. And so I went into labor at 24 weeks, delivered the baby. He didn't live but five hours. Um, he was just, you know, a, a pound and 13 ounces. So part of, I think part of that grief is us wanting to change and do something different and, and parent other kids because, you know, we, we, we didn't have kids at the time. And my memoir talks about that, you know, my journey of carrying my kids because now I have two more, my journey house parenting, watching my husband, father, children, and I didn't have a dad growing up was beautiful, really cool. Well, let me ask you this, and I, I don't know if you touched on this. I, I don't think your husband's a milk, correct? No, he's not. Did, what did you do, or what did the school do to make him want to be a part of what you already went through to, you know what I mean, to come, to come out? Yeah, well, go ahead. I'm I wish sorry. he was here to answer it. I mean, he just said, the magic of Milton Hershey, it's the thing that we all, we hold it so dear to us, like it's it's the love-hate relationship that you have with humanity, you know? Like humanity is broken. Children grow up in less than ideal circumstances. Poverty will never leave us. And there is this gift from the humblest man that ever walked the earth, in my opinion, besides Jesus, 
who gave it all through chocolate. Like what? He's like, this is the most amazing love story ever. I want to be a part of it. Like, is, is, is he st is he bitter with everything that happened, or is yeah. he? Is he as beautiful? Mm -hmm. He's not bitter at all. It's just a chapter in your story, so you just move on. Yeah, and then the second book I wrote is called The House That Chocolate Built, Parenting at the Sweetest Boarding School on Earth. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's about that. house parenting. And so I, I write about the elementary years and the homesickness and what little guys and little girls go through when they enroll middle school years where it's so emotional, up and down, oh my gosh, and how kids can really be mean to each other in the middle school years. And then I write about high school, and then I write about a graduation day at Milton Hershey. Mm. How significant it is to wear the ring, to walk across the stage. Um, and so, and, and, but it's from the perspective of myself as a student, and even like when you raise these kids that aren't yours, a lot of things happen. You know, like, okay. there's like a group mentality, and there's chores, and there's right. all those things. So, coming from the perspective of graduating from the mill. What was that? What was that? Ninety one, you said. Ninety one. So you graduated from the mill in ninety one, and then you look at all these people when you came in was ninety ninety nine. Mm -hmm. When you come in and see the difference, like because I just feel like personally speaking, when we graduated and it was I graduated in eighty seven, just like again we go back to the suitcase. Most people got a hundred dollars. I owed them money from a pair of sneakers or something. <laughs> so I, got, I got like thirty. I got like thirty bucks. You know what I mean? So I had a suitcase with with my drawers with my name tapes and stuff like that. And peace out, brother. And, and, and so like, and then nobody asked me like, where are you gonna go? Nobody asked me. I mean, fortunately enough for me, I had somewhere to go. I had. You know, I had a life of people that were there for me in Philadelphia. But what about the people who didn't? And so my thing is now, I don't know what your situation was. I know you said you were in Harrisburg, and then I know about the college and everything like that. But just, like, how did you feel? Like, And, and um, one of the people we, we talked to, a female, stated, like, she had no idea that she had to, like, like tampons cost money. Like she had no idea about like, and I'm, I'm just, it's the reality of it for me. Mm -hmm. and now to, to also be able to see the transition of watching these newer, younger people grow and they're with their graduation night or after graduation turned into, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm one of those kids that didn't really have somewhere to go. My aunt um, helped to raise us here in Harrisburg. I enrolled in eighth grade. My dad, she actually put us in the school because my dad got out of prison and he was schizophrenic. He was showing schizophrenic tendencies. My mom was bipolar at seven. She jumped off a bridge. She took her life. Mm. So like had no parents growing up. And so my aunt was like, there's a school down the road. You're t academically talented. You go ahead and you go. Well, when I graduated, she had sold her house and moved into a one bedroom. And my dad was in an efficiency apartment. So I stayed with him for the summer. But every summer after that, I worked at a camp with kids. Think about it. It's so funny. Square mm -hmm. meals a day, a uh, place to live, and a paycheck. Yep. Fell in my lap. It was like, this is what I have to do. I cannot go home. I don't know my dad. I don't feel safe staying with my dad. There is nowhere for me. Freshman year, sophomore year, in the summer, I worked at camps. Junior year, I lived above a church in North Philly, Bethel Temple Church, for the summer. And I volunteered at the church. And then summer after my senior year, I was engaged. So it's like crazy that I just kind of like figured it out for myself. You're a survivor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I wanted to give back. I want, you know, it was Let's House Parent. I was like, yep. Even though it wasn't my idea and even though it was crazy, I was like, yep. One, because I knew he would make me a better mom. I know that sounds weird. No, it doesn't. As a, as a husband, I saw so much of what he brought to our family like I mentioned before, and, and Warner, you weren't on here, but my husband's parents are gonna be married like 56 years anniversary this January. Sheesh. Talk about a stable home. Like yeah. he, he just knows what stability is, where I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know? Right, right. And he was, he was stable for me. And so it was like a rhythm every day. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put structure in the lives of the students and we're gonna, and Milton Hershey does that for you. You don't even have to try. And then structuring the lives of our children 
And then homeschooling them was my gift to them because life at Milton Hershey School, you're married to your job, you live where you work, you can never turn it off. The thing I wanted to give to our children was time because that is what you give up when you house parent. They get pushed to the back. They, some house parents, kids don't turn out right because they grew up in a studio. We all know that. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We saw look at us. Well, so, so look, Deanna, I want to drag you back into the milk as a student, not as a house parent. Okay. Jess, can you hit her with a couple of the questions? Yep, we're going to. Um, so I have Bring a few back. questions. They're just kind of like rapid fire. So the right. first thing that comes to your mind when I, when I ask you, um, did you prefer house or barn? Barn. Ooh. Were you in, where, did you get into trouble or no trouble? <laughs> Two kitchens. In five years. That's it? <laughs> Two kitchens in five years. I should have been hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> so no trouble. <laughs> Who was your um, first boyfriend? What was that? David Hartman. Okay. In eighth grade. And did you ever hook out? No. <laughs> we have a lot of no's on here. Did Dave ever hook out? <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone ever hook in? Good Did anyone question. ever hook in? <laughs> I mean, I should know, for, not for me, but yeah. What you know, know were you in? Limestone. Limestone. Oh, she was right next to me. Mm -hmm. Were you in Maze Land? I was at home. Where am I? No, I was not. No. I keep confusing that with Silverbrook. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> are you? All, all the time. My twin sister went to Cloverdale. Oh, and so I have a twin sister. Hmm. Yes. She enrolled, but she was terminated in ninth grade. She is now currently schizophrenic. I, looking back now, I think that she struggled with dealing with that. I don't remember her. Annie Bradley. Mm. Annie Bradley. I remember the name. I, the name is very familiar. What yeah. year would she have graduated? She, with me, 91. Okay. So we were there 86. We came fall of 86 in eighth grade. Fall of 87 that would have been ninth grade, and she was gone by spring of 88, by like January of 88. It's funny how you had to say her full name, because what about, old. so we had softball marathon, yard Olympic, similar to that after we left? Oh, no, we did. We had, so, we had that stuff. Now, they continue with um, student home uh, competitions. What do they call that? Intermarrows. What was it? Intermurals. Yes, they continue with intermurals even when I was a house parent. Yes, so we, that was fun. Barnyard Olympics, yeah, softball games, hay and straw. What, yeah. uh, whoa, 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 hay and straw? What happened? For barn, yeah. well, I, when I was a student, it was hay and straw. Oh, right. Yeah. I thought you meant after as a high. Uh, <laughs> Warner was like, what now? Nah. <laughs> so, so, so who was your squad at the mill? Who was your team? Like, who was your, who were your friends? My friends, Josie Laird, um, she was my best friend. We became I'm sorry, I'll keep freezing. I know, you keep freezing, Jackie. Now that's a nice smile, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. Josie, um, her sister Stephanie, Linda Boney, Linda Murphy, um, she is now. Um, Linda Brown, I figure out who else I got close to. People in band, you know, Jennifer Cole mm. um, in band, Scott Baca, he was my second boyfriend in band. Band, my band, band people. Baca. <laughs> yes. Okay. What'd you play, Deanna? I ran cross country and track. So, you know, any of the people who were runners, I did as well. Mm. What'd yeah, you I did a little running at the mill. Um, what was your instrument in band? Clarinet and alto okay. sax. Okay. I played the trumpet. Yeah. I, I played, played the, you played you the French the horn. Major. Yeah, yeah, I did that too. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Yeah, I did that too. I played the bass drum because I had no musical ability whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, bang that. <laughs> bang it out, I, brother. I had two notes every song. Did you play the triangle? I was just happy. <laughs> I was just happy to be on the band. Yeah. And then I did. I did. <laughs> band camp got you out of barn. That's band it. Camp. Man, first time I ever sunburned in band camp. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. right on my I, I played football. I didn't know about no band camp. 
But the band camp is the truth, man. Yeah, yeah, band camp. Band band camp I think of that what was that American Pie or something. That's all yeah. I can think yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. It's one time at band camp. Yeah. That's gonna be my next one. One time at band camp, finish it. That's all I can think of. <laughs> hey Deanna, listen, we're coming we're coming to a close now. I just wanted to give you a chance to talk about or touch on anything that we might not have spoken about uh, that you wanted to, you know, speak about. Is there anything you can think of? Um, just my last three years at Milton Hershey School as an administrator opened my eyes to just the machine of the school. It made me probably even more proud to be part of it because I saw the inner workings of how Scholastic and Psych Services and all that, like, join hand in glove, it was complicated. Like, I, w I don't think I could have lasted much longer as an administrator. Those who are there making the tough decisions about terminating kids, accepting kids, mm. dealing with house parents and disciplining is like another world. But so it just made me even more proud. Oh, I'm like, this is an, an amazing institution for us, for kids. We were part of something special. Yeah. I always I knew it as a student. I knew it even more as a house parent because your heart just grows even more. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the whole structure and organization of it. It's just something to just be so proud to be a part of. I love this that you guys are doing this podcast. Love it, love it, love it. I think it's so cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you you reached out to us and, and thank you for coming on. I know we're real happy to have you on and Absolutely. I'm glad it worked out to have yeah. you because you know Absolutely. you have probably one of the most in-depth stories that we've had so far because you've had the perspective of being on both sides, you know. Wow. So yeah. uh, thank you so much Three. for taking the time. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And appreciate it. And Three. Plus, yeah. I appreciate your perspective, just your overall yes. perspective. Very you. good. Yeah. Thank and you. I wish I was. I wish I would have. Um, we went. We were in passing at Webb's um, ceremony, but right. I didn't get to give you a hug. So I'm giving you a side yeah. hug now. <laughs> I'm not getting into that. Right? I agree. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's all about your attitude and how positive you can be, and you can make anything work. So absolutely, okay. I I agree with that. That is awesome. All right. Get it. Thank you so much, Jamie. Get it. Thank You're welcome. We're gonna let you go. Oh yeah, get up. Go get, it. get it. Get the drop. You going. can't do it. Someone else do so it. We need, you, we need you to say the drop. This is Deanna, blah, blah, blah. Because I, I don't want to be like Slammons, because I don't know if that sounds right. What do you like to but, say? So this is Deanna <laughs> Slammons coming to you from the MilkTalkPodcast.com. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. This is Deanna Slammons coming to you from the MilkTalkPodcast.com. Sweet. <laughs> Perfect. Sweet. You didn't, you're the first one that didn't trip. Well, <laughs> you you looked it up. You're hired. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to y'all right. later. Bye. Peace. Bye. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah.